great Christmas retail sales were touted by the government and their Wall Street media shills. The truth is, retail sales were down 4.1% during Christmas week. Most of any increase in retail sales in November, December of 2010 is due to an increase in prices, especially gasoline prices. The Fed Wall Street shrill, shills failed to mention that. Auto sales through December 2010 sank for the fourth month in a row. Bankruptcy filings were 1.53 million in 2010, up 9% from 2009. Does this sound like the great eco economic recovery we keep hearing about? Part 11. What is the true size of the U.S. budget deficit? The government reports that the total deficit for fiscal year 2010 was $1.29 trillion. They would never lie to us, would they? However, the total debt, now approaching $14 trillion, was $13.47 trillion dollars at the end of fiscal year 2010 and was 11.46 trillion dollars one year earlier at the end of fiscal year 2009 the US national debt grew by 2.017 trillion dollars in fiscal year 2010 and that is the real size of last year's deficit not the 1.29 trillion dollars the administration claims they only lied and understood, understated the real deficit by $727 billion. And that does not count off-budget spending for agencies such as Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginny Mae, etc. If you're going to lie to the American people, do it really big and they'll never catch on. Part 12. The deceit, corruption, manipulation, and self-dealing on Wall Street by the Fed off the charts. This began to be more obvious after the collapse of the credit default derivatives bubbles. The Wall Street giants like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, etc., made billions from their creations of this financial Frankenstein monster, and billions of its collapse. On December 11, 2010, Louise Story wrote in a New York Times article entitled, A Secret Banking Elite Rules Trading in Derivatives that every third Wednesday nine members of an elite Wall Street society representing nine powerful bank brokerages brokerage houses gather in a highly secret meeting in Midtown Manhattan to strategize on how to protect the interests profits of the big banks involved in the vast derivatives market JP Morgan Chase Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley are leaders in this small group which exists to coordinate market trading schemes, i.e. manipulation, in the highly leveraged, totally unregulated, $800 trillion plus derivatives market. The small group of Wall Street moguls continue to amass tens of billions in profits from the derivatives monster which they created and from the massive Fed government bailout funds created for the big banks a derivatives monster that has infected the entire world f financial system and which almost collapsed that system over the past three years. Their unethical, immoral, illegal activities driven by raw, unadulterated greed are beyond the reach of government regulators because they have massively bribed and co-opted congressional leaders from both parties because they are as powerful as the Fed which they own and control and because their activities, if ever made public, would collapse the global financial system overnight. On January 12th, Forbes wrote about how U.S. banks are deceptively reporting phantom, i.e. non-existing, income on $1.4 trillion in delinquent mortgages. They are allowed to accrue interest on non-performing mortgages until the actual foreclosure takes place which on an average takes about 16 months. All the phantom interest that is not actually collected is booked as income until the actual act of foreclosure. As a result, many bank financial statements look much better than they actually are. At foreclosure, all the phantom income comes off the books of the banks. 
Ultimately, these banks face a potential loss of $1 trillion on non-performing loans, suggests Madeline Schnapp, Director of Macroeconomic Research at Trim Tabs. The, political, the potential write-offs could be even larger, i.e. well over $1 trillion, should home prices continue to weaken, placing more homes in the non-performing category on the bank's balance sheets. Editor's note. This means that Bank of America, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan, and Wells Fargo, among hundreds of other smaller institutes, can report interest due them, but not paid, on an estimated $1.4 trillion of face value mortgages on the 7 million homes that are in the process of being foreclosed. This makes these banks' earnings and balance sheet look better than they really are, which boosts their stock prices but postpones a 50-foot tsunami of foreclosures and real losses that will cost the banks over $1 trillion over the next year or two. How the public is getting ripped off by the big banks and Fed. On January 14th, Richard Russell wrote regarding how the public is being ripped off by the banksters. Normally, the dollar would be paying an attractive rate of interest except for the manipulations of the Fed. Thus short rates in the US are around zero, courtesy of the Fed. Of course this allows banks to make a fortune playing the yield curve. The banks borrow from the Fed at literally no cost and with the money they buy from the Treasury bonds. The difference in yields is what the banks pocket. But how about the poor slob on the street? He gets nothing for lending his money. Does the Fed care? Hardly. The Fed is at the head of the banking system, and it's looking out for itself and the member banks. The Federal Reserve System was created for the banks and by the bankers. The Fed's first job to ensure the existence and the survival of the Federal Reserve System and the banking system that goes with it. The Fed's current task to convince Americans, including Congress, that the Fed has saved the U.S. and the world. How did they get away with it? Easy. The great majority of Americans know little or nothing about the Federal Reserve System. And I doubt if most congressmen know how the system works. You can see this when a Fed chairman is questioned by ignorant congressmen. It al it almost, it's almost embarrassing to listen. Alan Greenspan answered the Congress with his own brand of, brand of Fed babble. The congressman didn't understand a word of it, and thus they thought Greenspan was a genius who was speaking far over their heads. Ask any American, where does your money come from? The answer will be, the. When the mo postmortem on the collapsed U.S. financial system is written by economic historians in the next 10 to 20 years, it will be seen that these powerful market operators, or manipulators, were at the core of that rotten system and helped to set up America for the greatest financial fall in world history. Why are so many Americans, probably over 90 percent, almost completely clueless about the reality of our present financial collapse and depression? This is due in large part to the non-stop lying, propaganda, disinformation, and deception brainwashing coming out of the Fed, the Treasury, Wall Street, and its wholly owned and subservient financial media. The great majority of the American people are deceived and confused by the conflict between what they see and are experiencing and the contrasting bullish spin on events from the financial leaders and the media. They, also are, they, they are also confused and seduced by a rising stock market which on the surface, or at least would seem, to be forecasting a recovery in better times. But what they do not understand is that the U.S. stock market is completely manipulated by Wall Street, the Fed, and the financial powers that be, and is being propped up by over a trillion in Fed quantitative easing funds that were largely dire directed to and for the benefit of Wall Street, not to the public or the economy at large. The U.S. public, over 90%, are also abysmally ignorant of economics or finances, 
having been intentionally done da dumbed down by almost 50 years of liberal socialist education in America and non-stop political financial propaganda from the liberal establishment controlled media. To illustrate, illustrate that most Americans are dumb as a rock when it comes to finances, economics, and investments, remember that 98% of American investors were in stocks over the past decade, a decade that saw flat or down stock returns, i.e. zero or less, or less than 2% were in gold and silver, in a decade that saw gold rise over 450% and silver, silver over 630%. Most have never even seen a gold coin. A great illustration of how successfully Americans have been dumbed down. Sadly, the great majority of Americans have, a, have at best, a very shallow understanding of history, economics, finance, politics, or geopolitics. Americans under 35 years of age, the one who voted in Obama and his socialist cadres, have virtually zero understanding of these essential elements of our society, and most have never even read a newspaper. Such a dumbed-down, ignorant public are right to be shorn like sheep and lose their freedom. And sadly, as they are losing their freedom, the vast majority do not have a clue that they are being that they are slowly being boiled like the proverbial frog. In conclusion, the financial the American financial, economic, political system is rotten to the core and moving rapidly towards collapse and chaos. This has been accompanied by a moral, cultural, spiritual decline which has eroded the values that once has made America the greatest nation in history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the problem is just is not just Obama and his far-left cadre of socialists and Marxists in Washington. As lethal to our freedoms and prosperity as they are. The bigger problem is what has happened to the great majority of Americans over the past few decades. An anonymous writer reputed to be from the Czech Republic, obviously a student of the pr present great American decline, recently summed up the essence of our problem. The danger to America is not Barack Obama, but a, citizens, a citizenry capable of entrusting a man like him with the presidency, it will be far easier to limit and undo the follow the po the follow policies of an Obama presidency than to restore the necessary common sense and good judgment to a shallow, unthinking electorate willing to have such a man for their president. The problem is much deeper and far more serious than Mr. Obama, who is a mere symptom of what ails America, blaming the price of blaming the Prince of Fools should not blind anyone to the vast confederacy of fools that, that made him their prince. The Republic can survive Barack Obama, who is, after all, merely a fool. He is less likely to survive a multitude of fools. It is less likely to survive a multitude of fools such as those who made him their president. We'll call it quits for there. And uh, when I come back, we'll get into the anatomy of the oncoming uh, hyperinflation. Just a bit more to think about, folks. Peace.